a background in international development, but I really focused a lot on Africa. So I had three assignments, four assignments in Africa, and all of those were in post-Civil War torn countries that are at the bottom in the UNDP listings. And I just gave a talk at Jubilee like two Sundays ago introducing people to the history of Africa and um, the effect of slavery on Africa, the effect of the colonial regimes, um, specifically the Congo having the World War of Africa in um, 1998 to 2002. And I was there in 2006, which was the free, first free and fair elections in the Congo, uh, supervised under peacekeepers. So it was a um, very dicey time. Um, so that's kind of, but uh, I, I've lived and done my career in Washington, D.C., and in that, having two international de degrees, then my attention has always been global citizen. Um, I, you know, in, in D.C. you have access to talks, panels, conferences on every global issue and um, somehow I got myself to the first two World Beyond War conferences and have been, um, I have a complete set of David Swanson's books. Um, he recently spoke at um, Oracle Institute on Beyond Nationalism so that, you know, that theme is very important. The, the film that was promoted called The World is My Country, that film. Um, so this, this is all near and dear to my heart, because if you see countries um, that have so little, and then a war will unravel them 10 and 15 years from what momentum, you know, that, that they had. So that's a little bit about my background. So. We have a lot of people who are veterans here with uh, World Beyond War, but there is, um, I think it might be helpful because we're looking at a chapter. So there's a few things I can play here uh, regarding uh, setting up a chapter. One of the key initiatives that World Beyond War has done is called the Declaration of Peace. So these countries in green here are the countries where, that have people and organizations that have signed on to this Declaration of Peace. So I'll just um, read that uh, real quickly for everyone. I understand that wars and militarism make us less safe rather than protect us. They kill, they injure, and traumatize adults, children, and infants, severely damage the natural environment, erode civil liberties, and drain our economies. Siphoning resources from life-affirming activities, I commit to engage in and support nonviolent efforts to end all war and preparations for war, and to create a sustainable and just peace. So there's um, forms at the back that people can sign out to add their name to that statement. As many uh, of you here know, the uh, World Beyond War was founded five years ago. It's a decentralized global grassroots network, so there's chapters, there's activities in countries around the world, membership in 175 countries. Um, it says here this simple word called education, but if you look at the website of World Beyond War and the resources section, I mean, they've had four substantive conferences, um, two overseas, and all of those videos are available on, on the website. So it's, the thought leadership is really impressive. And then I'm also impressed with how, um, how effective, how creative their direct action um, activism is. Uh, World Beyond Wars, focuses on three major campaigns that we'll be talking about. One's called peace education, weapons divestment, and closing military bases. And out of there, if you see on the screen, there's something here called a global security system, an alternative to war. And this thought leadership, this is coming together of major strategic thinkers who have really 
said, you know, you, if you don't have a militarization security system, what are the alternatives? So uh, that's, that's something we're going to go into because, you know, as a chapter in Asheville, um, I think personally that that would be a really good focus is really studying this guide. Okay, so if any of us have connected with World Gun War, we know that uh, there's books by David Swanson, War is a Lie. So he uh, totally um, counters any myths about war that it's an inevitable, necessary, beneficial, or just. And we know why these myths aren't true, because it's war is immoral, it's endangering, it threatens the environment, it erodes our liberties, it impoverishes us, it promotes bigotry, and it costs $2 trillion a, a year on, on this planet when we are in such dire need for positive, affirming um, solutions and, and uh, you know, people-centered development. So then, so then the how, if that's true, that's the diagnosis, <coughs> then the solution of World Beyond War is, is this report that I just mentioned, a global security system, an alternative global security system. So uh, the team, David Swanson and, and his team, they're very prolific. They're very, uh, they've got, uh, of course, the books. And I myself participated in online courses. And when, when I was sitting there and doing these modules, I was just in pure inspiration. I mean, the level of people that they brought that gave the little um, you know, talks at the beginning and how, how that was led and how hopeful and but really substantive. So um, just helping uh, set this up, they had everything thought through, what to share, how to you know, approach this kind of meeting. Uh, their, their conferences, the speakers there are amazing. From uh, you know the second one had a film on the Congo. The, uh, they had a speaker from South Africa. They had speakers on closing bases. Speakers on you know how the military system tries to put shooting ranges in high schools, putting youth at risk for lead poisoning. So it's it's really runs the whole gamut. Um, So uh, the um, World Beyond War is a movement, it's um, a mobilization of lots of grassroots groups uh, around the country, around the world. So each group will set its own goals, its own strategy and tactics, or you know, take some leadership from the central team. There's six uh, staff. Uh, part-time staff who all work from their homes. There's no physical bricks and mortar for World Beyond War. And so as a chapter, what we would be organizing to do is advancing this mission to, to abolish war. And um, you know, there's a, a, a book on the desk called um, When the World Outlawed War. And there, there's this like misguided thing in history where the 20s and 30s and the incredible peace movement to never have something as devastating as World War I again, how that was mainstream across the country, throughout Europe, never do this again, create the UN, create the International Criminal Court. So um, anyway, uh, so the, the thing is, it's barbaric, it's murder at a mass scale, there's no justification. Um, so that's, so it's artic and, and World, World Beyond War gives us the way to articulate this, right? So what a uh, chapter would do is host an event, host a film, participate in one of the campaigns, do education for ourselves, um, for peace education, and then, you know, stay up to date on World Beyond War weapons divestment and uh, their closing military bases campaigns. 
um, which will help collect signatures for the Declaration of Peace. And uh, to, be, to be a robust chapter, it's kind of expected to have four events per year. So, so what this team provides, and I've experienced this with Greta, she's really been amazing. I'll, I'll say an idea of like, here's, here's my idea, here's, here's like, I'd like our group or chapter to get involved with disseminating this amazing um, resource of this uh, alternative security system. And then she just floods me with links and information and there's a there's a 15 um, a 15 page and here it is I'm gonna pass it around um, so the report is actually a report so it's like a it's like a book but they've boiled it down to a 15 page executive summary so let me just pass that around 